Hello. Okay. So I'm Lauren. I'm the head of sales and marketing here at Sebelts Field, and this is Fiona Donald, our chief wine maker. So, what I wanted to ask first is, um, yeah, you have a, you have a great history, right? Uh, great heritage of making uh, fortified wines, and also back back, back in the days, uh, liquor, right? And um, now you shifted more to making non-fortified wines, as I understand. Uh, that's your main focus, but you're still releasing uh, Tony uh, Tony ports like with different age, and this is your like uh, like the the most premium product. Uh, what do you what do you think of uh, fortified wine making uh, back then versus nowadays? Uh, what is it for you? Is it more like prestigious uh, thing to do, or you are still really, really on it? Because I know you're also making some sherry style wine. You have Solera systems, right? So, what is what is it for you right now? Fortified versus non non fortified. Uh, well, you know, as as you just um, outlined, you know, the fortified wine making is an extremely important part of our our history. Um, and really the jewel in the crown is the 100-year-old uh, tawny. The fact that we have the longest unbroken line of year-dated tawnies uh, in the world is uh, unique. Um, and yes, older wines pop up, old Madeiras and what have you, but uh, this unbroken line is, is really unique. So that is such a, such a unique and special part of our history and the fact it was the vision of Benno Seppelt, Joseph Seppelt's the founder, uh, Joseph's eldest son, that was his vision, and the fact that it's been maintained through generations, through world wars, through family uh, fighting, one, one could assume, uh, in corporate ownership. Uh, so that's, uh, that's why it's our jewel in the crown. It's so terribly important to our story. And so um, the 100-year-old really heads up the uh, Tawny portfolio. So that's an extremely important part of our fortified and overall portfolio. Um, with our table wines, uh, in the last uh, five years, we've had an opportunity, if you like, to have a reset on our table wine portfolio. And what we've done is we, we gave careful consideration to the varieties that made up uh, the fortifieds historically. And we gave careful consideration to the styles of tawny that we make. So if we just put the 100-year-old aside for a minute, when we consider para grand, para rare and para 21-year-old, overall Sepultsfield tawny style, those wines are medium weight, they're aromatic, they're balanced, and they're very fresh. And so when you consider those points, that's what's informed our table wine making. So we are rediscovering traditional fortified varieties as table wine, we're reimagining traditional fortified varieties as contemporary table wine, and the fact that our wines are, have great fruit purity, they're aromatic, they're medium, they're balanced. Uh, that's a lot of the cues we're taking from our fortified winemaking. So whether everything old is new again or you don't throw your history out, you know, you, you learn from it, you respect it, maintain it, of course, but it should also, I think, to some degree inform, inform what you're going to do in the future, particularly when we have such wonderful assets. We have this beautiful estate, we have the gravity winery, we have the contour planted bushfire Grenache vineyard. Um, we have, and of course, the, the hundred year old um, uh, lineup. So we have so many beautiful assets at the estate that um, you, why would you start again? But you also need to use those to help you push forward. And the Centennial Collection or the Centennial Cellar rather, there is nothing else like it in the world. So we are so incredibly lucky to have that as, as the jewel in the crown. Um, at Sepultsfield, um, we get people that come from all around the world to visit the museum um, and with the intention that we hope that they taste the 100-year-old, um, which is as Benno intended it when they visit us. Um, when, when did it start? When, what, what, what was the first, first release of, of, of this? So it was 1878. So the Sepultz established the estate in 1851. And up until 1878, the wines were being produced, uh, so history tells us, in the dairy. And so at some point, Joseph Seppel decided to undertake the building of a winery on the property. Uh, and that winery was completed in 1878. Joseph actually passed before the winery was complete. Benno took on the project and completed the winery. 
uh, which was ready for the 1878 vintage. So it was Benno who decreed that he was going to lay down a barrel of his finest port to honour his father and commemorate the completion of the winery. So that's why that date's so significant. And the first release of that wine was 1978. So to think that that wine was in touch for 100 years is just incredible, isn't it? Tell me also the, the production methods. Uh, how, how is it in line with like a classic, let's say, port, port wine production? Is it like, um, do you have any, uh, uh, any specific things you do or it's, it's still more and more of like a classic method of production and also uh, the grape varietals? Like, let's say, what, what was planted back then and what are you having now for, uh, for making fortified wines? What, what grapes do you mainly use and what? Mm -hmm. what so what we can tell from an old document which shows what Benno Seppert was willing to pay for grapes, um, mm -hmm. Grenache, Shiraz, Matara were um, in the makeup of the, the older wines. Uh, these days we really rely on Shiraz and Grenache, um, not so much Mataro. And I suspect in the vine pool in the 80s in the Baros, there was probably more Mataro loss to that. Um, and so old vine Mataro is quite precious in the Barossa, but there's still a lot of um, old vine Grenache and Shiraz um, and also newer plantings of Shiraz and Grenache that are suitable that are suitable for fortified production. Cool. Um, also, what I want to ask is, uh, so we have 1923 today and um, this is uh, like normally we imagine port wine is, is a blend of different vintages uh, or, 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 is a, or is a single vintage one as well. So what is about this, this one? Is it, is it a blend of different vintages with the youngest, with the youngest one in the blend of 1923 or it's a pure, purely 1923, 100% vintage? Yep, it is single vintage. So in our portfolio, we have uh, a couple of wines that are quite typical of Australian tawny wine making. So they're blended average age. So our para grand and our para rare are blended average age tawnies. And then we have two year dated tawnies in the portfolio. So each year we release a 21 year old. So this year we've released the 2002. And then we always release a 100 year old year dated tawny. So as you correctly have in your hand there, the 1923. So yeah, they are single vintage. Cool. And, um, and what's, the, what's the production? I know you're making only this size bottle uh, this, this year, right? Bottling only. So yeah, so as of 2022, we have moved towards just the 100 mil formats only. Yeah. Um, the driver for that, Andre, is because um, obviously it's a, a rare and precious collection. And after a considerable audit of this collection at the end of 2021, we looked at some of the years that, to be really honest with you, are in danger of not living till they're 100. Um, so, and that's because of obviously previous owners and some vintages being consumed or shared a little bit more uh, generously than others. Um, so we decided that as custodians of the cellar, we wanted to make sure this collection lives on. And as part of that strategy, we would discontinue the 375 mil bottles, we'd do 100 mil only, and you can come to the winery and taste obviously directly from the barrel. Um, so with the intention that this collection is going to live on um, and hopefully it'll reach more people. Um, yeah, let's get a taste it. I'm kind of tempted to draw what a color. <laughs> Looks like you just had a little generous pour there. <laughs> I did. It's my glass. Nice. Looks good. Yeah. So I think the thing that always captures people straight away is that intensity of colour, that those yep. amber tones that, you know, like a, like a big toffee shard on a fancy dessert, you know, and the fact that it hangs on the glass, like stained glass window. Yeah, the, like the only thing I can, I can think of, like, compared to my experience, like, uh, it's Pedro Jimenez, like, it's, it's something what usually comes in, it comes in this colour, right? Um, and it's really, like, deep, deep and dark, so... But it's, it's still quite vibrant, you know, that amber, more amber, amber yeah, tawny, it's more, it's more amber hue. hue, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not so much the khaki, the olive green hue. Yeah. Um, the point I'd make about the wine is when they're young wines, they're made, uh, we have a certain um, 
we have criteria we follow with so the wine's balanced in terms of BOME, pH slash acid, acid and alcohol. And so as young wines, they're very crimson and slippery, but they're balanced. And what happens, they start balanced and then they evaporate and concentrate balanced. So, for example, even though the TA of that wine, the titratable acidity is up around 12, 13, uh, it's in balance with the other attributes of the wine. So in one sense, that core of acidity, that, that, that number, drives the freshness and the length and the vibrancy, um, but you're not just tasting that acidity alone. You've also got increased alcohol and you've got, um, you know, obviously the sugar has increased and then you have effectively rancio, which we, we can't use that term, but all that complexity and concentration that 100 years in barrel maturation confers. So all that depth and concentration. I like that walnut deep character it has and also like like deep dried, dried fruit like persimmons and Yes, so there's a lot. I think it's got quite an abundance of a peel type characters, as in citrus peel, and so that makes me think of plum pudding and pan fort, which is often full of walnuts and, and various nuts. That yep. that concentration, so it's rich, but it's it's not. It's like eighty percent, you know, dark chocolate. It's not sweet, sweet. It's rich and brooding and dark, but it's not sugary sweet. So dense and viscous. And so textural as yeah. well. Yeah. And, you know, you can imagine, I mean, our job as custodians is that maintenance, that appropriate topping and then that appropriate downsizing. You have to maintain freshness. Indeed, like, like uh, acidity is there. I can, I can mm. really, if it, like, light, light, lights it up, it yeah. adds, 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 adds some fruitiness too. Because, like, the texture is really, like, nutty, like, very polished. Mm. But that 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 is there's so much going on. Yeah, that acidity concentration gives you a real vivacity and, and vibrancy. Mm. So you don't feel like the wine's old or you know um, cloying or super syrupy. It's not. It's nothing like syrup. It's an in, intensely no, concentrated. It's just, yeah, it's, it's just like dense and, and it's like it's like viscous, but but it's not syrupy because it's not sugary. Well, there's so much going on. It, it actually like now. It really makes sense to have like that kind of small bottling because it's it's like it's like an essence, you know, like you really like drinking yes. an of, of 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 great tonic. And what's your what's your general take on the on the on the forty five wines? I mean, nowadays like 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 sherry is kind of trying to get a new new breath, and uh, port wine also like needs to be a bit promoted a bit more. We're we're going to Portugal with James. Uh, this this April to, to taste uh, to tasting there in Duro Valley. Uh, what's your what's your gen general thought of sweet or fortified wines uh, future? Um, like of course they it, like it's it's more like niche wine. It has its niche, but like uh, what's your what's your prediction? I think that these wines it's more about getting them in glass and showing them. Um, to a new audience that might have a perception that it's a it's a wine my dad used to drink, um, but actually when you put them in glass, particularly our house style, it's medium weight aromatic. Um, most people are pretty surprised at how fresh they are. So I think that whilst this wine, as we suggest today, is obviously consumed by itself, um, more of our commercial products. Um, we've looked at experimenting with making cocktails and, you know, serving an espresso martoni with a paragrand um, and in a Negroni. So it's that the sweetness of it. Um, yeah. It's a great making for a cocktail. So I think there's lots of different ways you can serve fortifieds. It's just a bit of an educational piece and a bit of trial and scale. Yeah, it's really mentioned. I I'm really like... Not not like surprised, but I'm really amazed of the freshness of the wine. Like I think that's that's that acidity that also adds adds that kind of edge that that makes it. Uh, you kind of forget about sweetness, right? It's not yeah. it's not uh, it's not sugary. It's 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 sweet, but it's more like uh, getting yeah. towards the end. It's like drying out and it's like making jumps like more medium sweet mm. and, and 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 really fresh. That's that I think that's amazing. But it's it, but it's very long. There's so much going on. Like when you have a sip, it's just like 
it's just minutes of something going on in your ballot and it's like mm. you're Mm, it's almost it's almost haunting. It it lingers, you know, on the palate yeah, so long. It, 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 yeah, it really lingers, and and you and you just don't know where where you're going. Like you're going more on a textural thing, like getting all these nutty flavors, or you actually have fruit flavors which are more like dried figs or persimmons, and like driven by that acidity. And this all together, like it's really really gives it like lots of length and and, and joy. It's like it's really like enjoying the wine. Beautiful, yeah. Very, very good. Just we, we we had just one wine to taste, so yeah, yeah. Really nice, nice to meet you both. Yeah, thank you so much for the introduction. I uh, really, really enjoyed it. And um, no, no, I was just saying it was lovely to meet you too. Thank you so much for your time and your kind words about the wine. Well, thank you, thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have a good day. <laughs>